Welcome to You Hope. Just trusting that you have had a great week in the Lord and that you're looking forward to another great week in the Lord. One thing I never want us to forget is God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I'd like you to take your Bibles and let's turn to Romans chapter 8, beginning reading with verse 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And then verses 38 and 39 says this, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Have you ever asked yourself the question, does God really have everything in control? One of the questions people like to ask me is that very question. And then they follow it up with, I really don't think he does. That question comes up more when things really aren't going well in someone's life. Our world has gone through so many disasters. And as I was reflecting this week on some of the disasters that we have faced over the years, over the many years, I thought of Back in 2004, I know that's going back a ways, but at that time there had been an earthquake in the Indian Ocean and a tsunami occurred, which caused more than 200,000 deaths. And one that hit our country that people can say where they were and what they were doing at the time that it happened was September 11th, 2001. Almost 3,000 people at that time lost their lives. And someone told me something, or sometime after 9-11, he said, do you really, you, you really can't tell me that if there is a God in heaven, that he would allow something like that to happen. And then, here we are today, once again, commenting about the COVID-11, or COVID-19, the virus, the crisis. People find themselves asking that same question. Where is God in all of this? And then, when we go through personal crises, we might not say it out loud, but we think it's, is my life spinning out of control? We as Christians sometimes feel like we've missed the mark of what God wants us to do. Because it seems like We've hit a dead end. It seems like we just thought we've gone down the right path, doing what we felt like God wanted us to do, and it brought us to a dead end. Having all of us at some point looked at our lives and said, can anything be made of this mess? From our human perspective, things, things look kind of chaotic. Things look bleak 
when we look at the situations of things going on in the world. When things seem out of control in my life, and yes, I face situations also in my life, when something hits me that just makes me feel like what's going on in my life, I don't know why this is happening in my life, and I'm sure all of you have felt that way numerous times, I tend to look at an individual in the Bible, his name is Joseph. As a young man, his brothers sold him as a slave. He winds up later on in prison. And then, after many more events going on in his life, he finds himself as second in command of all of Egypt. And as a result, he was able to save many people from starvation, including his brothers and their families. We as Christians face the same problems other people face. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, here's what Joseph said. But as for you, and he's speaking to his brothers here, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people's lives. Now, just a side note here. This next verse tells us the heart and the Christ-like attitude Joseph had towards his family. In spite of everything that they had done to him in the past, everything that they had put him through, Remember in the beginning of this, I said he was a young man. His whole life was ahead of him. And here it is. This is what Joseph said to his, his family. Now, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them. Now just picture in your mind for a minute what they had put him through and he comes back with, don't worry. Don't be afraid. I will provide for you. Another example is found in a man named Daniel. Daniel was a young man when war came to his country, he was taken from his family, his friends, his country, and he was taken to a strange land. He was tempted to compromise his faith in God. Whatever dreams he had were gone forever. You know, as a young man, You've got dreams in life. Even as you start aging, you still have dreams in your life. You've got your whole life ahead of you. But Daniel had all of that taken away. As time went on, Daniel became a top man in the land. He was able to advise world leaders as a result of the position that he now held. One more example is Ruth. After about 10 years of marriage, her husband died. The man of her dreams was suddenly gone. They had no welfare in those days. So Ruth was left 
as a poor widow. She went to a new country with her mother-in-law. God gave her a new and a wealthy husband. And I don't want to forget to say that she had committed her life to the God of Israel. And just one more example is the three Hebrew children. We think of that story often, at least I think of it often. They refused to bow their knees to worship someone other than the God of Israel. There was going to be consequences there. That was they were thrown into the fiery furnace. The king said, I thought we only put three in the furnace, but I see four. God was with them through their fiery trial. So many examples throughout the Bible can be listed, such as Paul, the Apostle Paul, such as Stephen and David. And now I, I can trust, as I've been sharing with you just these few examples, <clears throat> you've begun thinking of situations in your life you begin thinking of situations that you found yourself in, that you will and probably already are thinking of those situations where God has been with you and where God has seen you through some very difficult times in your life. And as I look around, I can see different ones of you that have gone through situations just that I know about. But yet God has been with you. God has led you through those times. Some of you that are watching this morning, God has been with you. God has taken you through. He's walked through situations with you. And as I see it, as those examples that I've given you, the link between each example I gave was this. The commitment that each one had with God. The relationship they had with their Heavenly Father. John chapter 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done. Did you catch that portion in there? It says, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, if you dwell with me, if you honor me, then you can ask what you will. And it shall be done. Again, the scripture points out the relationship. When you have a relationship with your Heavenly Father. Now I'm not talking about just a casual relationship. That happens, you know, like if you're walking down the street. You see somebody coming that you know, and they say hello, you say hello. You say how you doing, they say good. And it's all over by the time you pass by each other. That's it. That's not a relationship. God wants the relationship that you have with him as one that develops, one that grows. When there is an effort put in to getting acquainted and to get to know each other, 
You spend that time together, and we call it quality time these days. You spend quality time with that individual to get to know. That's the kind of relationship I'm talking about right now. God wants a relationship that develops and grows. And with that relationship, God gives us a choice. God has given us the freedom to choose. The freedom to choose which path that we want to take. Just like us, when we are raising our children, we may or may not tell them there are consequences for making bad choices, but you know there are. Simple example, going back to Daniel, what do you think the outcome of Daniel would have been if he had been thrown in the lion's den but hadn't been following Christ? I want you to think about that. And how about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You know, those three Hebrew guys that wouldn't bow down. And the consequence of not bowing down was getting thrown into the furnace. What do you think the outcome would have been if they hadn't been following Christ? I would venture to say that the king wouldn't have been wondering why he saw three people in the furnace instead of four. Because there wouldn't have been a fourth one in the furnace if they hadn't have been following Christ. I encourage people, I encourage Christians to go after that relationship with Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved that he gave. What is it that he gave? He loved you so much that God sent his son into this world to pay the price for your sins. And on top of that, in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. That's the confidence that we have in Him when we know, when we have that relationship with Jesus Christ. God has a perfect plan for your life. Have you ever stopped to ponder and think just what that might be? Remember the comment I made? God gave us the ability to choose. So, some but not all of our problems are a result of bad choices. An example, I'm sure everyone here knows someone that's, that's done this. You have your rent money in your pocket and you choose to go to the casino instead of paying your rent. Now, I'll, let, I'll leave the results up to you to think about what that outcome would have been. Another example, I have a friend, a dear friend. He's very much overweight. He has health problems as a result of being overweight. A doctor has talked to him 
told him about it, and his response was, I'm going to eat whatever I want, whatever I want. I'm going to enjoy my life. Doesn't matter what the results are. And he is facing, and I'm going to leave that one up to you also. Psalm 37, verse 23. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Another translation that that word good is replaced with righteous. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. <clears throat> I want my life, the steps that I take in my life to be ordered by God. How is it that you are this righteous person? It's by that relationship that you have with your Heavenly Father. It's by seeking to grow in Him, to get closer to God. That desire to know Him more. My encouragement to you today is this. In your life, seek after the things of God. Seek to build on your relationship with God. Too often, we seek the gifts that God has for us rather than the giver. Don't seek the gifts. Seek the giver of those gifts. And he, the giver, will give liberally. But you've got to seek the giver. James chapter 1, verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes from God. Again, seek the giver. C.S. Lewis put it well. Our problem is not that we want too much from God. It's that we want too little. So my question to you is, what do you want from God? What do you want from God? Do you want a God that just, you run to Him when something's wrong and, God, I need this, God, I need that? That's not what I want. I want that God where I'm drawing closer to Him. And as I have fellowship with Him, the Word, once again, I want to remind you of this, says, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Is that what you want? That's what I want. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. And God, I know that people as they're listening, as they're watching, wherever they might be, Lord, maybe going through some traumatic issues in their life. Father, I pray that they seek after you, that they draw closer to you. And as they do, Lord, they know that you've got everything under control. Father, I just pray right now that those within the sound of my voice will look to you and come to you and say, God, I need you. Heavenly Father, I love you. And I thank you for the blessings on my life. Amen. And amen.
Don't forget, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. I trust that you have another great week in the Lord. Go forward excited about what's going to happen in your life through Jesus Christ this next week. Amen.